Hello everybody, welcome back to Reentry the Orbital Simulator. I'm Bat Boob and this is the only way is Beastly. Uh, today I will be doing uh, Project Gemini lessons purely for the fact that the Apollo Transportation and Docking Mission, uh, I don't know whether there's a glitch or an error on it, every time I've been lined up perfectly with the, uh, the, the lunar lander. It just flies straight through, it doesn't even attempt to connect. So I'm not going to attempt to do that seven times and I ended up losing my temper with it and nearly broke me, uh, my headphones. Um, and the full Earth exam mission isn't actually complete yet itself, it's still in test phase. So um, what we will do is start off with the Gemini lessons. I've done all the Mercury ones but I've not actually touched the Gemini ones. So we will start with pre-launch. Uh, just before we do, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Help us get to a thousand subscribers and check out our previous video which I will put a link above right now. And it's a chance to win one of our first ever giveaway items. So check it out guys. Okay, welcome to Gemini. A capsule sitting on top of a 38 meter high Titan launch vehicle. In this lesson we will prepare the spacecraft so it's ready for launch and launch configuration should I say. Okay, so the spacecraft is more advanced than Project Mercury and it contains more systems including a computer. Woohoo! So, it contains um, obviously the computer there which is here. Uh, so I will initially just explain the procedure and then I will highlight what you will have to press. Okay, so we're sat in between everything here, that's perfect. Okay, so I've just moved um, into the centre here by pressing F11, which is it's just a couple of the controls here. So page up, page down, forwards, backwards, uh, and the mouse wheel to zoom in and out, so that's fine with me. Okay, you can reassign controls to whatever you want in the settings menu, but I don't, I tend to leave them as they are. Once I've learned them, I'm okay with that. So. The procedures we will learn today is the pre-launch procedure. Later you can use the pre-launch checklist for reference. So right now the spacecraft is powered via a umbilical cord and once we lift off we need to ensure that we are running on all electrical power we got. In short, the spaceship is dependent on two different electrical power systems. So uh, first we have four zinc silver sorry silver zinc batteries connected in series inside the capsule itself and the other is a fuel cell system located in the adapter section generating power from the hydrogen fuel and oxygen uh, so these fuel cells are the primary source of power during launch for redundancy we want to ensure that all of these systems are in operation this is done by setting all the main battery switches to on and the fuel cell switches to on so the fuel cells are all here so one two three four well, they are all on. Okay, so the spacecraft has two fuel cells, each with three stacks, reducing power, producing power, should I say. I have more on that in the electrical systems lesson, so we're okay for now. So that's a primary power source there. Let's set the fuel cells on. You can see the gauge has just gone up there. Okay, and there we go, and there we go. And there they all are. Oh, let's turn that on. There you go. They have shot up, and then that one. Perfect, they are now all aligned perfectly. Okay, so the main DC bus is now powered by both systems. As in Project Mercury, the pyrotechnics are dependent on um, another isolated power system, the Common Control Bus. And this system is powered by three silver zinc squid batteries, and they should stay on for the duration of the entire mission. And they are turned on here. This is where the squid batteries are, so let's turn them all on. Roger that, they're all on. Okay. <clears throat> so, the common control bus is now powered, and the pyrotechnics are used to create the controlled explosions to separate redundant rocket parts and to jettison components from it. So, for security reasons, the system needs to be armed as well. To do this, set the boost insert to arm. This arms all the squibs needed during the launch and insertion stages of the mission. Okay, so that is there. Okay, so for safety reasons, all four retro rocket engines will also be set to arm. Let's flick that up, and that one, and that one, and that one. There we go. So, forgot to mute my phone again. So next we will turn the onboard computer uh, on, so the OBC is the AC powered through the IMU and the main DC using the internal uh, internal inverter. So, turn it on, that's it, that's the computer on. Okay, so when uh, so when on the computer needs 20 seconds of self-tests and the computer display and keyboard is located on the pilot side. So there it is, 
There you are, it's running a couple of tests. They should go all to zeros in a moment. There we are, all done. So, self tests are done, and when it goes to zero, it's all ready to go. If not, then you can press clear just to reset the display. It won't affect the memory at all. And while the computer is running the self check, let's set up the environmental control system. So, in short, the cooling of the spacecraft is done by a liquid cooling system going through all of our components. Uh, so, using coolant, heat exchangers, radiators, and so on will help it to stay cool. The spacecraft has two of these cooling systems, each independent upon each other. Using pumps, the coolant flows through the system. Okay, so let's set the primary coolant pump A to on. Okay, and let's set pump number B to on, and secondary pump on, and B on, okay. Also set the suit fan down to the 1 and 2 position, okay, there we go. So make sure both fans are on, okay. So pay attention to the cabin pressure. So cabin pressure does seem slightly high, but I don't think it's actually reset yet. Uh, the coolant pumps and fans will usually be on until adapter separation. Okay, so the computer needs to be turned on in the pre-launch mode. But now that it's on, set it to the ascent mode. There we are, we're on ascent. So this will load and ready the ascent module and is automatically started during launch. Perfect. If the computer light is green, uh, the computer is working. If a MALF light is amber, a reset is required. So it's not actually on yet, but I assume it is okay. So do not press this now, but if the computer light is not illuminated green during launch, start it manually by pressing the start button, which is that one there. And there's the reset button next to it, okay. <clears throat> All that is now left is to let Mission Control know you are ready using the radio command. So tap C, so if you do, all those disappear, so tap C to bring them back up. And let's press ready for launch. And once the countdown reaches zero, the rocket will launch and ascent into orbit automatically. Feel free to take a look around the cockpit to get familiar with it. And that is it for that particular lesson, guys. Quite a short video. Sorry for the interruptions from my phone. I'm going to have to find out who it was because I had to turn it straight off immediately. Um, don't forget to stay tuned for more videos from The Only Way Is Beastly. Uh, we do try to get out at least three to four videos every week. Apologies for the delay um, for the last couple of days. been working and I was exhausted. There's nothing I can do about that. But I've got one ready for today. And hopefully you'll all love it. So take care, guys. We'll see you shortly.